Testing, testing, testing. This is Teresa Kempen. I'm at 709 East Liberty Street. I'm doing an interview with for English Two Honors. It is January 2nd, 1990. I'm interviewing Rita Tidoff, and my subject is hair, hairstyles and hair care. Okay, Rita. Um, what do you remember about the hairstyles and hair care of your times? When I remember back as a young girl, I remember the style that was in at that time it was called the finger wave. And you'd put a, some kind of a sticky boop on your hair, and then you'd take your fingers and you'd put the comb and push it back, and then you'd move your finger and you'd pull it back, and you'd go all around your head like that with the, with the finger waves. But you didn't dare comb it out because you just loosened it up. But you never went through it because they'd all come. They'd come out then if you go through it. And uh, but that was probably I was probably about thirteen, maybe twelve, at that age. And then's when I remember. That's about the time then you notice your hair. You know the styles of your hair. And that was a big style, was called the finger wave. And all the young girls had their hair like that. And uh, the length was about the what it is today. Some, some of them wore their, wore their hair longer and some wore it short. The majority wore it short, though with the finger wave, you couldn't do it if you had long hair. And they, the majority of people had their hair short at that time. And. Uh, and then the, then the boyish bob went through, and that was real short. Their hair, they called it the boyish bob, because it was cut like boys had their hair cut. And uh, then a little later, when I was about 16, then we started using what they called the curling iron. And you'd have a kerosene lamp and you'd stick your curling iron down in the lamp globe to get it hot. And then you'd curl your hair up with it and so that it would be in curls. Or if you wanted it waved, you would put a waving iron or crimping iron. And, and then you would just heat that the same way in a lamp. And then you would stick it in your hair and just squeeze it. You did. And then it would make kinks or waves all down your hair. And uh, that was the style around when I was 16, because I remember doing that myself. <laughs> and I couldn't date till I was 16. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a big thing to be able to curl <laughs> your hair. And my hair was as straight as a string, so there was no curl in it. <laughs> and uh, very few people went to a beauty shop to do, have their hair done. Most of them did their hair at home rinsed it, washed it with a shampoo and rinsed it with vinegar or lemon juice. For the rinse, we didn't have cream rinse. So in order to take the snarls out, you'd rinse it with a little vinegar in the water. Or else lemon, if you could afford it, you'd put lemon juice mm -hmm. in. But that was a, the care of your hair. And uh, then permanence came. I think it was probably about 18, 19, 18 probably, when I had my first permanent. Can you hear, you think you can hear that on there? Probably 18 when I had my first permanent. And permanents came out then. I can't remember the price of a permanent. I think it was $4.99. I think it was $4.99, the price of a permanent. And they were, they were more fuzzy than what they are today. They weren't, you know, as natural looking as a lot of them are today. They're, they improved an awful lot on permanents. And then from then on, my, then we went through the hairstyle of Page Boy. Do you remember the Page Boy? And everyone combed their hair and all, always had it underneath. Combed it right straight down, and just the ends were all turned under. 
and that was uh, called the page boy. And, uh, the majority of the women had it like that. The ones that had time to do their hair every day. <laughs> so, uh, but I never bleached my hair, I never put peroxide on it. I just left it. But someone went today, and then someone had what they called the, that was around when I was 16, called the spit curl. You, know, you pull some down here and make a little spit curl, do all your bangs, have your bangs all in a little spit curl, and bring them down and wind them around. And you always did your hair up on your, we didn't have rollers. We had bobby pins, and we'd take them, and then we'd roll them around our finger, and then push them down, and then stick a bobby pin through it to make it stay in. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, I think that was when the permanents came out. And they always used just bobby pins to do your hair. And then after, uh, after that, the rollers came in. And I think the rollers have been in ever since. And then we went through a stage where they used the great big rollers. They would use juice cans. You know, the small six ounce cans of juice. Some of the, some of the girls would use the juice cans for their, to put their <laughs> hair up on rollers because they wore their hair long. Because that was, I was older then. But my uh, young girls, so that probably was in the for early 40s, in the 40s probably. They start would use and have the great big rollers in their hair. I bet you don't even put a roller in your hair today, do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, and I think after that, then the, the styles turn to uh, everyone to their own. Don't you think it is today, a lot today? Each one to their own. See that I miss any in between there? And just like when you first start, when we first started with rollers, we didn't comb them out. We comb, put those rollers in, and then we take them out real careful. And sometimes we go out with our hair all in these little tiny rollers all over our head, <laughs> and just. You know, leave them like that. And then pretty soon they start combing them out and making different styles with them. But I can't remember when the ratting came in. Remember when they, that was the year Joyce graduated. That would have been in the 60s. So I think in the early 60s probably they start ratting their hair. And then they were real puffed out. Remember, can you, you can't remember the styles either when they're, um, could you give me any more about what you remember about your the hairstyles or how you took care of your hair or anything else? Well, just like at home would be the only thing, you know, when you'd wash them, why you'd always uh, wash them and then you'd always rinse them with uh, the vinegar or the lemon juice. And I never bleached my hair, so I was told maybe you, maybe you'd have somebody that used to bleach their hair and do different things with their hair, but I never did. I've always left mine the same color. I never, never colored it. I just have always left it. And uh, I remember one. I don't know if this is it. I remember one day we was. Four girls were playing together. And that was when Boyish Bob came in. So the, there was five of us. So the three younger ones were going to go over to the next door neighbor for a while, and they would decide to give each other a Boyish Bob haircut. Well, their mothers weren't very happy when they saw them. they had to take them to town. And that's all they could get was a boyish bob haircut because they were so nonstop. We laughed about it, but we were sure glad the, the, 
the one that was my friend, her and I that was close to age, we were sure glad we were in on it. <laughs> But I know, like, my mother, and she, uh, she had her hair cut for the first time when she was, when I was about 12. And her hair were long that she could sit on them, and they all, the older women wore them up in buns, most of our friends. And she went down and had it cut in the, at the beauty shop. And they cut them shoulder length so that if she wanted to do it up again, and then they waved it off. And I thought she really looked pretty when she come home with that hair, cutting her hair all curled, because before it was always just brought back tight with a bun on her head. And I thought she looked so pretty when she come home. And she wore her hair short all the time after that. So that was probably it. In the early 30s. So it was in the early 30s when they started with the with the waving irons and that. Outside of that, I don't remember. Uh, you know, there was nothing else to take about taking care of your hair, and I think the majority of the people did the same thing. They did, and they had what they called waving setting wave. You know, when they would do the finger wave, that gel. It's a lot like what they call today. Uh, is it called gel set or mousse? Because mm -hmm. it would make your hair real stiff. Your hair would be just stiff. So if you got it messed up, you had to wash it again to get the waves back in because there was no way you could get it back in again. And after that, it's Hair take me. There just isn't a lot of different things to do. You just wash your hair, and that's it. So, of taking care of your hair, you know. So, it's a probably a short subject for you. Um, I have some more questions. Okay. Um, what were some of the typical hair pieces that you used in your hair after you styled it, like um, the hats or the barrettes, like some pieces that you put in your hair? Oh, like that. Ribbons. We put ribbons in our hair. Sometimes combs. Now, my mother used combs a lot in her hair. And we used bobby pins to, if something would stick up, why we'd take a bobby pin to put in it to hold it down, you know, if it wasn't right in place. You used a lot of bobby pins to stick in your hair to hold it in place when they first came out. And before that, it would be ribbons, mostly ribbons in your hair as young girls. And because uh, I remember in the 30s when I would do my little girl's hair up, I always used ribbons in her hair all the time. And they didn't have all these different things at barrettes and If you had your hair braided, my mother never braided ours, but a lot of the girls would have braided hairs, and they'd always, their hair would be, not hairs, braided hair. And they would always have ribbons tied on the end of the braid. If the braid was way long, no matter what length it was, they'd have a ribbon tied on it. And then when the barrettes came out, by well, then they'd have, later years they had barrettes in the, and we had the barrettes to put in, sometimes to hold it back on the side. But I always wore my hair with straight bangs, straight, straight cut around. <laughs> as long as I, as I, all while I was a young girl until I uh, got a permanent. And uh, then after you got permanents, you just washed them and just left them. You didn't, hardly anybody styled their hair after. After they got a permanent, they would more or less just leave the wave come in. What was a permanent wave? And then it was later when they start, you know, fixing their hair. Probably someone started it, and they followed, you know, fixing their hair different ways.
that uh, some girls would use peroxide to bleach spots of hair, like when they'd want to curl and they'd want it light, and they'd put the peroxide <laughs> on it to bleach it out. Yeah. Some things like that. Now she just, uh, and then as I told you before, as the curlers came in, then you, you use curlers all the time. Mm -hmm. Like when you want to go somewhere, you'd always do your hair up and for dress or but for school. In school, as long as I went to school, the only ones that had their hair curled was the ones that had curly hair, natural curly hair. The rest of the girls all had straight hair or braided. And we went to school. But uh, the older ones, when they would want their hair pumped out, you know, they would save. When they comb their hair, you know how hair come, your hair come out sometimes? They would save all that. And then they would bunch that together and to make their hair puffed way up, they would put that hair in and then they would take their hair and comb over it and then hold it in with hair pins. <laughs> but see, when I was real young, when you went away, the majority of the time you always wore a hat. I would like to play, but you never went to church without a hat. You never went to a wedding without and so uh, your hat would cover your hair a lot. You'd, you know, you'd fix it, but you, uh, if you know how a hat flattens your hair down, why well, you'd wear a hat most of the time when you would go away. Or else you'd just leave your hair, you know, straight. And, uh, but the older women when I was young would Lot, some of them that had long hair and didn't put it in a bun would, uh, was that, because then I remember my mother having three or four bunches of hair, about six inches long and about this big around, that she'd keep adding to them when they were, and then she'd put it, sometimes when she wanted her hair to fix, you know, to be puffy, then she'd comb that back, put, lay that hair in there, and then put a small bun under her hair so this would puff out. That was one of the things that they, they and they called them rats. <laughs> I don't know where they ever got the hair. That probably from when you know when you'd have a tangle in your hair, and when you try to get it out, you'd always pull some hair out, and that was called they call that a rat. And that's how that probably the hair that they saved got its name from. I say I think there's where ratting your hair comes from because it's kind of like snarling it. Um, what were some solutions used in cleaning your hair utensils, like your combs and brushes? My mother and we always just cleaned them with uh, soap and water. And then she'd have like a, a brush and then just clean them with just plain soap and water and she'd clean them with. And sometimes the brushes, she'd put a little vinegar in the water to freshen them. Probably a lot the same way they do today. No. Um, can you describe to me how um, a permanent was done back then? A what? A permanent. Oh, a permanent. Oh, a permanent was put on, they would put it on a, they'd put a solution on your hair, and then they would wind it around a roller. And then this roller, they had a big thing that's come down with, had a lot of clamps on it. And the clamps, would they would roll this hair all up, put this solution on your hair and roll them all up. Then they would, these real hot clamps, they would clamp on your hair. And that's how you'd get your permanent. 
That was first. Then they came out with what they called a uh, cordless permanent. And that was a solution in a pad. I could never, because the solution in those pads was too strong. And the ends of my hair just matted right together. I couldn't even get a comb through them. I cried every time I had to comb my hair. And my sister-in-law said, I'll give you the best permanent they make, and I bet it won't. But it still did. My hair just couldn't take that solution. And uh, I know people, a lot of people that got burnt with them, either the hot clamps or that solution was too hot. But that solution permanent in those pads, that didn't last too long. That lasted about two years, three years. And then they went, stop that. I forgot all about that until <laughs> you reminded me. <laughs> That's um, all right. But the first ones came out with this machine, and it had uh, electricity went through it, and it would get hot like a like any coil would get hot today. Yeah. And that's how they did. You know, they wind your hair up all over, and then they put a pad by your ears over a, a cold pad, so your ears wouldn't get burnt. And right here, they beside your head, they put a pad, so it wouldn't wouldn't burn you. Because when they'd wind this all up, then they would put a pad that would slide over the top of that in between each one so that the hot clamps wouldn't touch your skin. There was a like a rubber pad after they wound it up. They'd stick that on your hair so that it wouldn't burn you. But once in a while, someone would still, you know, get burnt once in a while. Not very often. And then they went to the, the machinist one, and then they went to the, what do they call the ones today? Just call them permanents, don't they? You know, call them machine waves. That was called a machine permanent, the first one, and then it was a machinist one. and then just the permits that they have today. But they've improved on that a lot. <laughs> now what? Okay. Um, what were some remedies used in shampoo, the different things they used in shampoo, different spices, or do you remember any of them? Did no, I don't remember any remedies that they put in for to make your hair smell good. Sometimes, I don't know, some put in, they called it toilet water that you could buy. I haven't heard of toilet water in years, <laughs> but it was a perfume water like that you would buy. And a lot of times that, some people would put that in there in their rinse too to make their hair smell good. And it was, uh, and then the shampoo was a milk shampoo they had, called a milk shampoo that you could buy and use for your hair. And that was real white. That was probably in the, I would say that was in the late 30s when they had that milk shampoo that it's called though. A lot of people just use Castile soap. Castile soap was one of the soaps that you could use to wash your hair with because it rinsed up. It rinsed out better with your Castile soap. They claim that it it would, you know, it would all rinse out of your hair better. And that's why they used the vinegar and the lemon juice in order to get all the soap out of your hair to add with your water. I always washed your hair in rain water. You mm -hmm. never took water out of the faucet. We didn't anyway. My mother always caught rain water to wash our hair with. And that would make it a lot softer. So I remember her always 
kitchen rainwater. Then after I got married, I got too busy. I didn't have time to catch rainwater to wash my hair. Because then well, just about every home had what they called a cistern. And that cistern would fill up with the rainwater. And see, then you'd have a, you could either take it out by it with a pail. And, but if you had a pump on it, why some people had a pump with a faucet and would, it would, could pump the water out of the well, out of the rain well. And you, you had a well, well water was drinking water. And the rainwater was to wash your clothes and wash your hair. Now you rewrite this, don't you? I hope. <laughs> Um, what was a typical day of doing your hair like? People didn't wash their hair every day like they do today. Your hair got washed every Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday was the day to wash your hair. Every Saturday you got your hair washed. And then as time went on, why, I guess people got more fussy. And then we start washing our hair twice a week. And so now as a young girl, I usually washed her hair twice a week. As I was older, and I, you know, start running around. Mm -hmm. But until then, I, it was just on Saturday, everybody had their hair washed. And Can you describe to me the different sprays that women used in their hair? When did spray come in? The only thing I can remember when I was young was this here gel that they would just goop all over your hair and to make those waves in. But then after when you got, when you first got permanence, they didn't use a spray. I don't think they even used a spray when the first, when permanence first came out. They would just wash it after you got, no, they didn't wash it even. You had to have a permanence so long, so many days before you could wash it. So they would just give you the permanent and comb it out. And I don't think they used any spray. I can't remember any using any spray. I'm trying to figure out, trying to think when spray first came out. tell you when we were young when we polished fingernails we never polished them like today we always polished them just till here never polished in you never polished on the moon you always had to have a moon on every fingernail <laughs> you just polished in between then you take a, a cloth and you just go around just real careful on that to mm -hmm. get that well, but I see they're starting that again but you know what they do? You can buy a little tape that forms your fingers and you take that on and then you polish your nails and you pull the tape off. Hmm. So the ends stay. I just see that on TV this week. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that on there. It just reminded me of it. Hmm. So 
Well, that's all I can remember. Um, do you remember what a typical barbershop looked like back then? A beauty shop. When my mother went, mm -hmm. they were in stalls and you couldn't see the other person having their hair done. A Mrs. Darling had her beauty shop where uh, You know where, um, oh, they sell those shirts right across the river in the first block. She had her beauty shop in one of those buildings there, right next to where the, you can't remember where the Chesting Argus used to be in there either, can you? <laughs> See the corner buildings down. Well, she had it in the building, that's uh, the first one where, uh, Chapleys are in now. That very first building there, that used to be a used to be a beauty shop in there. And when you went in, there was a desk, and you went in, and a couple chairs to sit on. And then they had uh, a petition between every one, and she had, I think she had three or four stalls. And when you'd have your hair cut or washed or anything, why? You would go in that so that they couldn't, no one else could see you while you was having your hair done. And then later, why they omitted them. Mm -hmm. And then they were all open like they are today. But I can't remember, I can't remember if the chair, the chair must have tilted it back. I can't remember if the chair tilted it back, it must have. I know a barber chair chair did. Yeah. But the chairs were a lot on the same order. The barber chairs were a lot on the same order as they are. I know. But I never uh, went much in a barber chair until in the, into the 40s because my mother always cut all our, all of us kids. Except her, when I go with her, I go with hers a lot of times when she'd have hers done. But she'd have hers done just for special occasions. And, uh, so she always cut my dad's hair, so he never went to a, a barber shop. He'd always pass out every time he got, and that's why he said he could never go into a, into a barber shop. It seemed like every time he'd get in, they'd put that around him so tight, mm -hmm. he would pass out. He said he did it as he was young, so he never never went to a barber shop. He always had mm -hmm. cut his hair, or the neighbor man would cut it. Your problems in your hair, like dandruff or oily hair. Dandruff, we used to put like an oil before we washed it. If anybody, I don't remember too many. I don't remember many times, but, but I I do remember though one time that uh, my mother used. I think she used an olive oil and you would rub it all in your hair, warm it, and then you'd rub it all on the skull and then then wash your hair to take care of dandruff. It was one of the solutions. And I, I'm sure I remember, I think it was an olive oil that she would buy. myself. I must have though. Hmm. 
seems like everyone goes through it. Because I sure hate to see Joyce's hair stay all week. When she was young, I, she had to wash her hair every day. And sometimes she'd wash it every other day and you'd, she looked like somebody poured oil on it. <laughs> it would be just grease. It would just flatten right out. Her head was so oily. Mm -hmm. I had a hard time with her. I can't remember what my mother did. If we had Audie there. I don't remember anybody ever complaining about it. Just a minute, Herb. Excuse me. Just a minute. They do. They did every once in a while. You'll hear it in school every once in a while because I know that a couple of years ago they had it at uh, Horton Lake had an epidemic of it, and then they give them something that a nurse come into the school. I remember here in town, one of our more wealthy families. You are putting this on here. His, uh, his mother said to him, what, will you quit itching your head? He said, if your head itched like mine, you'd itch it too. And she looked. She said, I couldn't believe my eyes. And they really went through the school. That was probably, because I haven't had anybody in school for 20 years. So that would be 30 years ago. And then, but when I was young, and they had that at whatever, whatever, it seemed like every few years it would happen. And they would use kerosene to put on your hair. And then use a fine tooth comb to keep going through your hair to keep it without, you know, so you'd get rid of them. You had to get rid of the, the eggs on your hair, which laid on your hair. And you had to, and they had them in, in schools. And when the school would get them, it would be just like a, an epidemic, just like the measles would go through. It seemed like when one would get them, they'd all get them. And uh, a lot of kids in school. And uh, so, and you would use a little kerosene and then a fine tooth comb and you'd go through your hair every single day. And then of course you had to wash it every day to, uh, in order to get rid of them for nine days. And that would kill the lice, what they called the nets on your hair because they attach right to the hair. And uh, the fine tooth comb would pull them off. And that's what you do in order to get rid of them then. But then later years, because I remember that year that my young girls, they were second and third graders. And I think that's the only time my children ever had them, was that year in school. And they mm -hmm. really had a epidemic of them through the through the whole school, and they uh, don't know, you know, where do they start from? Mm -hmm. They start somewhere. But when we were young, and that, and I remember that epidemic went through when I was a young girl, probably about fifth grader, must have been fifth grader, sixth grader, and they went through, and they would use kerosene to in order to get rid of them. But you don't hear too much of it, but I was surprised, because I have a daughter that her children go to Houghton Lake. And she goes, oh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. 
she said, every kid in school has got the second and third grade. She said, I think every kid in the second and third grade's got them. So there had to be somebody that had them and brought them in, but where'd that first person get them from? Mm -hmm. Just like everything else. And now they just have a, some kind of a shampoo, you wash them, wash it three times with it, and then you wait three days and wash them again, and wait three days and wash them again, and that's it. So you just get rid of the, the, uh, the lice themselves right away. You don't have to worry about it. But then you have to worry about that you don't let the, the nets hatch. They said that was a thing in school that you had to take care of your hair that they really watched for in school. The nurses would come through like twice a year and check everybody. And it might have been because you washed your hair once a week, too, you know. It could have been, I don't know. But I know as I was going to school, as long as I went to school, I know it was just once that I, in our house we ever had them. And it was all of us that same year that all the ones that were in second and third grade got them that year. In the same way with that, so it must come into a, when they're younger, I don't know, because you never hear of older children get them, mm -hmm. having them. But that was a thing that they would watch for in school, in the schools. So now what else? <laughs> um, what do you remember about the most famous hairstyle? remember the finger, that finger wave one and then they had what they call the windblown bob and that's a lot like I can just see Jean Harlow yeah Betty Davis uh, Joan Crawford And movie stars, they all had that, and it was kind of flat up here, and then it had like a little wave, and then the rest was all bushy around their hair, and I can I can just see them all yet when they played <laughs> movies. So that must have been when I was 18, 20, that style. being 